Yeah. Uh, until I had read the uh, Late in His Life interview with Norman Dodd, I personally had never heard of the Société Générale de Belgique, but lately on the internet, on some of the conspiracy discussion groups, I've uh, seen speculation that they have... I'm getting to it. I've seen speculation that the Société Générale has co-opted the leadership of the Round Table, the Pilgrim Society, and I'm wondering if you can tell us uh, anything from your research. Well, uh, I remember spending a couple of weekends with Norman Dodd, a wonderful gentleman, and uh, he used to talk about the Society Belgique. Uh, it certainly was a very, very powerful force dealing with the Belgian international interests, uh, mining in Africa. Um, I really believe, if, if you see what's happened in the Congo recently, uh, they've gotten rid of Mobutu, they've gotten rid of Belgium and other interests, and America is moving in. Probably the Society Belgique has been somewhat um, eclipsed by the Anglo-American uh, power structure. But, but uh, you know, when you start, you know, who is the final uh, arbiter? Who's really in charge of everything? Who are the three men who rule the world? I don't know. But I know who rules all of them, and that, of course, is Lucifer. I also know that if you read occultic writings, they talk about the inner government. They will tell you that Colonel Edward Mandel House, who led the inquiry uh, to Paris in 1919 and was the man who manipulated Woodrow Wilson and really worked to prolong the war to get America into the war uh, to ensure that Russia uh, survived. We could spend an evening. Sometime you'll invite me down, and I'll tell you the story of uh, of uh, Colonel House because his diary has been intentionally suppressed. It was bought up in 1970 by, in 1976 by um, Times Mirror. Uh, so, so they copyrighted it so it couldn't be copied. It was given to Yale University to be kept for 50 years, available in 1976, bought up by Times Mirror, copyrighted so it could be printed. I was there in 80, and they said it's going to be released any day. I called uh, last, uh, within six months, they said it's going to be released any day. They're simply suppressing it. That's how you suppress things. You copyright them. Uh, but but uh, uh, certainly, Colonel House is part of what's known as the inner government, at least according to the occultists. Society Belgique, where it fits, I can't tell you. Uh, Dr. Monti. Yeah. Uh, let me just answer the intimate. The papers of Colonel House, his diary, is still back at Yale University. Uh, there are only four copies in the world, and I know where they all are. And uh, we'll talk about that sometime if you give me another invitation. Fascinating, fascinating insight into one of the most evil men in the world. And of course, the only way to understand Colonel Edward Mandel House was to understand that he was an occultist, and that's where his mystical powers came, and how he was able to control President Woodrow Wilson and the pre prime ministers and premiers of all of the European powers. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dr. Montes, you briefly touched on something uh, that I really wanted to ask you about. Um, in the World Almanac, 1996, it states that in the United States, we have 158 million Christians of all denominations. If this were to be true, how could a people of one unity and accord allow what's happened in this country to happen when you see Christian pastors standing up on Sunday or whenever they have services complaining about what's happening out there? But let's do nothing but pray about it. Let's let God do everything for us. I think in God's eyes, that kind of negates our purpose of being alive here on the planet. Could you kind of expound on that a little bit? All right, fine. Well, that's one of the great problems of our time, is the fact that the Christian church has been neutralized. Now, it's been neutralized because when young men go to our seminaries, they are taught that all you have to do is read Romans, and Romans 1 says, or Romans 2, I've forgotten, one, Romans 1 or 2, I think it's Romans 1, and it says that all government officials are there by ordination of God, and you are to be subservient to them, and if you're not subservient to them, you're not being subservient to God. And since it says that in, in the Bible, it's got to be true. Well, it's not true at all, because... Paul was writing a letter to the Romans living in Rome in the first century. If they spoke out, they tried to oppose the power of government. Uh, they were, you know, uh, subject to all sorts of horrible uh, uh, retribution. But more than that, I do not believe for one minute God wants us to be subservient to the Luciferian forces in our society today. That doesn't mean we ought to take up arms. It's certain. 
But it does mean we have to speak out and tell the truth. We've got to educate our ministers. We've got to educate our board of deacons. And that's why the information you heard tonight is important. But the documentation, uh, you're really going to need this, and I hope we'll have it done. I've been working on this for, I started out, I thought it was going to take me two weeks. I've been at it for four months. We'll have it very soon. Get it to the, the ministers, get it to the board of deacons, and say, you have an obligation. We're dealing with Luciferian forces at the highest echelons of our government. This has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with Republicans and Democrats. The, the Christian hierarchy has been infiltrated. We've got uh, people out there working with uh, so-called Christian quasi-political organizations telling us we've got to elect Bob Dole. Bob Dole? I mean, you know. Uh, so... But I think there's another element. I really think that there's a spiritual blindness out there among Christians. And we've got to take those blinders off. And the only way we're going to do it is what we're doing. Uh, you know, my chosen talk radio, because I think it's a great medium. And if you don't listen to me, why, well, I, uh, I hope that you will. And uh, get others to listen and get them to support our efforts. We have 17 stations across America. And we've done it. We're just, my wife and I and my son and a few of my loyal friends in Santa Cruz who come up and answer the phones and fold the letters and help us. And there are other people doing this. And support anybody who has a voice. If you have a voice, try to get others to support you. If you don't have a voice, then support the people who do have a voice. We have to get the word out. We're working against time. The things are unfolding at such an incredible, incredible speed. Uh, but we still have this window. Uh, and, of course, but more than that, uh, early on they talked about the spiritual aspect of this. And certainly... Second Chronicles 7.14, prayer, pray for our leaders, pray for our ministers, uh, pray for our nation. Uh, prayer is so important. We, we have to, if we were worthy, I believe God would intervene. Now, he may very well be so angry at America, he's just going to destroy this nation. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. But I know that the more people we can lead to the Lord, the more people we can get to really stand firmly on a spiritual foundation, the more people are going to be able to survive in the terrible, terrible times that lie ahead. We are in for some bad times. But our nation is spiritually blinded, sir. Yes. Uh, Dr. Monte, um, I, I don't know if you've ever run across uh, Doc Marquis. He was born into the Illuminati family, was a member for 20 years, and he claims that the Illuminati is, is recruiting people through the Masons and that their organizations, their mouthpieces, their uh, think tanks are the Council for Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergers, Skull and Bones, all these secret societies, and that the Illuminati is really behind the New World Order and the takeover. Uh, do you have any input to this or anything that you can add or I, uh, No comment. Hello. I've been studying theosophy for the past couple years, and as far as I can see, it's only derived from the highest spiritual standards. Um, I don't see anything Luciferian in it. Perhaps I'm just at the very bottom of the pyramid, but there are these study groups all over the world, and nothing about Lucifer is ever mentioned, but a lot is mentioned about, um, you know, like I said, how, the highest spiritual standards. So where can I get more information to corroborate what you're saying about it? The Dark Side of Freemasonry that we have back there uh, is one book, and you get in touch with me, I can get you all sorts of books that will get you in the background of theosophy. It comes from the very pit of hell. Uh, have, you, uh, have you read The Secret Doctrine, Isis Unveiled, the others? Well, we're reading The Secret Doctrine right, right. now. It takes uh, a, a while. Actually, uh, Madame Blavatsky is deeply involved with... Uh, uh, with Luciferianism, and she made many, many references to it. But I think if you want one, two books, uh, one is the dark, si the, uh, dark Side of Freemason, the other side is the Demonic Side of Globalism. We have both of them back there, the $10 each. Uh, and uh, if you don't want to put out the money, you can write to me, and I'll tear out the pages or copy the pages and get them to you. Uh, but the thing is, it is a fraternity within a fraternity. It's going to get good people in, just like the Masonic movement did. You see, theosophy came out of masonry. And uh, Madame Blavatsky was a female mason, as it were, uh, whatever that means. Uh, but her ideas came out of the occult. And, of course, they go back to the mystery religions. And, of course, the underlying theme of this whole thing is deny the God of the Bible and deny that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you get into it deeply enough, uh, and I warn you, uh, you're dabbling now, 
but the deeper you get into it, the more trouble you're going to get into 